Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? And welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 and 2 class. Today we're going to continue with fraction and decimal operations. We're going to look at part 2 today, and we're going to focus on decimal operations. So let's get right to it. As far as adding and subtracting decimals is concerned, it's pretty good, pretty simple. You simply line up the decimals and add or subtract. Remember, though, that whole values have a decimal at the end of the number. For example, the number 2 really equals 2.0 as far as a decimal value. Think of money. If I give you $5, it's really 5.00, right? So there is a decimal at the end of every whole number. Now, of course, if you see a decimal already in a value, that's the proper place for the decimal. But as far as a whole number goes, there's a decimal to the right of every whole number. So after you, you make sure that you line up the decimals nice and neatly, you're going to go ahead and simply add or subtract just as normal. And it's literally that simple. So let's try it. For example, I've got 3.256 plus 10.25. So I'm going to make sure that I line it up nice and neat. So I've got 3.256 plus 10.25. Don't try to make the numbers fit. Make sure that the decimal fits, okay? Make sure that those are lined up. So I have now have 6, 10, carry the 1, that's 5, drop my decimal, 3 plus 0 is 3, and I've got 13.506 or 13 and 506 thousandths. I've got here 11 point. 235 or 11 and 235 thousandths minus 6 and 598 thousandths. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract this normal at this point because I've already lined up my decimals. So I'm going to borrow one from here, making that a 15. So that's 7. Borrow one here, making that a 12. That's a 3. Borrow one from here, making that an 11. That's 6. And then borrow one from here, making that a 10. So I've got 4.637. Not bad, right? Pretty simple. How about this situation? This scenario sometimes confuses people, so let's go over it. What if I have 5.6 minus 3.254? Or in other words, 5 and 6 tenths minus 3 and 254 thousandths. Well, the 5.6 is followed by invisible zeros okay you could put as many zeros as you need behind there in order to be able to do this subtraction right here okay you need those zeros so let's get right back to it then so now let's go ahead and subtract as normal because i've already taken the time to line up my decimals so i can't take four from zero so i borrow I'm making that a 10 that's 6, 9 minus 5 is 4. Don't need to, don't need to worry about that. However, since I took from a 0, I must borrow from the next one. So that's going to be a 3. And I don't need to borrow the, from the 5. So that's 2 and 346 thousandths. And last but not least, 151.256 plus 11. 0.0023. In this case, you can go ahead and add a zero here to the right of six just to make it look better, but you don't need to. It's required for subtraction, okay, when you're missing values in the top decimal value that you're subtracting from, you need zeros. But when you're adding, you don't need them. It's nice, though, just to stay consistent. So zero plus three is three. We got eight. 5, 2, 2, 6, and 1. So I've got 162 and 2,583 ten thousandths. Okay, that's how you add or subtract decimals. Number 2, multiplying and dividing decimals. Okay, I'm going to split this up into first multiplying decimals, and then we will work on dividing decimals. Okay, so first of all, for multiplying decimals, you want to go ahead and just multiply as normal. This time, you want to ignore the decimals, okay? 
when you're adding and subtracting them, you want to line up the decimals. But when you're multiplying decimals, you just want to multiply the numbers as normal and just pretend the decimals are not there. Just ignore them. And then, step two, once you have the product, move the product's decimal to the left for as many places as there are numbers to the right of the original decimal. Okay, and let me explain what that means right now. When we go ahead and multiply, for example, number one, I got 3 and 29 hundredths times 1.6. Again, I do not need to line up the decimal. In fact, do not line up the decimals. Pretend the decimals don't exist for a second, and let's just multiply. So 9 times 6 is 54, carry the 5. 12 and 5, so I had 7, carry the 1, that's 19, skip a space. Then I've got a 9, 2, and a 3. Let's go ahead and add them. This is 4, 16, carry the 1, 12, carry the 1, and 5. And now, move the product's decimal, okay, to the left for as many places as there are zeros. I'm, I'm sorry, for as many places as there are numbers to the right of the original decimal value. So let's think about that. We'll go in blue now. To the right of the original decimal value, I have one, two, and three numbers to the right, right? I have these two, and then I have this one. So I'm going to go one, two, three to the left, which will equal five and 264 thousandths. Let's do another one. Let's do this one. We've got 12 and 2 thousandths times 4 and 1 hundredths. So I got 2, 0, 0, 2, 1. Skip a space. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Skip two spaces. 8, 0, 0, 8, and a 4. When I add these together, you've got 2, 0, 8, 2, 1, 8, and 4. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers to the right of the decimals. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places to the left, rendering me with the answer 48 and 12,802 hundred thousands. Next. I've got 2.3 times 0 0.0059. I like having more numbers on the top when I'm multiplying, so I'm going to, sorry about that. So I'm going to write it as such, 0 0.0059. Let me erase this here. So I've got 0 0.0059 times 2.3. So multiply is normal. 7, carry the 2, that's going to be 17. Skip a space. 8, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, and 0. So now I'm going to go ahead and add like normal. I've got 7, 5, carry the 1, that's 3, 1, and a 0. And I have, behind the decimal, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I'm going to move my decimal to the left of my product. One, two, three, four, five units to the left, rendering 0 0.01357 or 1,357 All right. And last but not least, we've got a negative. Please remember, a negative times a positive is a negative, so this should not be a problem. So I've got 6.23 or 6 and 23 hundredths times negative 3.5. Please be careful. Make sure that you, you realize that you're multiplying, okay? It is a negative times a positive, but you're multiplying. Don't add them. So now let's multiply as normal, ignoring our decimals. So I've got 5, carry the 1. That's uh, 10 plus 1 is 11. And then 6 times 5 is 30. Skip a space. 9, 6, and 18. 
So now we add. And I have behind the decimal, I have one, two, three. So I'm going to move the product's decimal to the left, one, two, three places to the left. And my answer will be 21.705 or 21 and 705 thousandths. And last but not least, dividing decimals. Okay. Now, when we're dividing decimals, I want you to really understand the proper setup here. Okay. First of all, when you have a fraction, okay, you have a numerator and a denominator, that is division as well. It is a fraction, but it is division. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you have a whole number over a whole number or a whole number over a decimal or a decimal over a whole number. You have a numerator and a denominator. And every single time that fraction can be converted to a decimal, we've talked about this, you could just simply divide it. Whenever you have a fraction bar, yes, it is a fraction, but it also represents the fact that you can divide. So the denominator, okay, always goes on the outside and the numerator always goes on the inside the denominator is called the divisor and the numerator is called the dividend the answer to a division problem is called the quotient note okay if the divisor that means the denominator the number on the outside if the divisor is a decimal it must be converted into a whole number by moving the decimal to the right as many places as are needed to make that value a whole value. Remember that whatever is done to the divisor, though, must be done to the dividend. And we're going to see what this means right now, a few examples. But there is a procedure. So in order to divide decimals, number one, Convert the divisor into a whole number if needed. It's the C note above. This is the note we're talking about, okay? If the divisor is a decimal, you must convert it into a whole number. Step two. Go ahead and find the location of the dividends decimal. This is the inside of the house part, okay, the numerator. Find the location of the dividends decimal and immediately move it up to the top of the division symbol. I always do that so I don't forget. And then three, divide as normal, keeping the decimal location you have marked. So let's get to it. All right. Number one, I got 16.14 divided by 12. Well, 12 is going to go on the outside. 16.4 on the inside, immediately I bring my decimal up so I don't forget. 12 goes into 16 one time. Be neat, my friends. Please be neat. That's very important while you're dividing. 12 goes into 40 three times. That's 36. Twelve goes into forty-four three times again. That's thirty-six. And you have eight left over. Okay. Twelve goes into eighty six times. That's seventy-two. And you're gonna have eight left over, so that means this six is going to be repeating. Don't be afraid of repeating digits, okay? If you know it's going to repeat, simply put a line right over it. It's literally that simple. And I think that I made a mistake, and I did, because I dropped the 1 here as a 0. And this is completely wrong, and I apologize. There is no excuse, but there is a lesson to be learned here. Always double-check your work. That, that answer didn't make sense to me. I apologize. There's no excuse. But this is good. If it can happen to me, it can happen to everybody. 
We are all human. We make mistakes. So how about we do this again, but properly this time, and I will actually pay attention. I'm going to practice what I preach. I apologize. So 12 goes into 16.14, goes into 16 one time. Now let's try to do this correctly this time. I'm going to bring up my decimal. I'm dropping down the 1. Sorry about that. And now 12 goes into 41 three times, which is 36. That's a 5. Bring down the 4. And then 12 goes into 48 four times. I'm sorry, 12 goes into 54 four times, which is 48. And we have a 6. Drop down to 0. 12 goes into 60 five times. So my answer is 1.345. Again, I apologize about my mistake. I got to pay attention. So do all of us. Okay, let's move on. I've got 0 0.032, okay, on the outside, and I've got 0 0.65152 on the inside. So remember, whenever I have a decimal, Okay, as a divisor, I have to move the decimal to the right as many places as needed to make it a whole number. And then whatever I do to the denominator or the divisor must be done to the numerator or dividend. So I'm going to move my decimal 1, 2, 3 to the right. I'm going to move this decimal 1, 2, 3 to the right. And I'm going to bring it up immediately so I don't forget it. And 32, okay, goes into 65 two times. So that's 64. Break that down. That's 1. Bring down this 1. 32 goes into 11 zero times. So I've got 11. Bring down the 5. And 32 goes into 115 three times. And that will be 96. So I drop down my 2. This is a 9. And that's going to be a 0. So that's 1. So I got 192. And 32 goes into 192 exactly 6 times. So that will be minus 192. And my answer is 20.3. Six. Okay, last but not least, last two. I've got 0 0.024 divided by 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 goes on the outside. 0 0.024 goes on the inside. I've got a decimal as a divisor, so I'm going to move one to the right. I'm going to move one to the right. I'm going to move it up so I don't forget. And 4 goes into 0, 0 times. 4 goes into 2, 0 times. 4 goes into 24, 6 times. So my answer is 0 0.0. Six. Hopefully that's making sense and making things a lot easier. And last but not least, I've got 2 into 46.48. 2 goes into 4 two times. Drop down the 6. 2 goes into 6 three times. Oh, I almost forgot my decimal. Always remember that decimal. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 goes into 4 two times. 2, so okay, 4, sorry, I lost my place there. And then drop the 8. 2 goes into 8 four times, so I've got 23.24. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned a lot, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.